Hello, in this video, I want to go through CTEC IT and give a quick overview of this qualification, but focusing in particular on Unit 1, which is the exam unit, uh, one of the exam units, I should say. So I've got a set of videos on it, and so this video is going to be me introducing the exam, but also my videos as well. So first of all, CTEC IT. CTEC IT is my abbreviated shorthand version of the proper name, which is Cambridge Technicals Information Technology or Cambridge Technicals IT. Um, also referred to as CTEC IT as in with the H as well. These are unofficial names, both CTECs. Um, it's, I call it CTEC because it's similar to a BTEC. A BTEC is by a different exam board called Edexcel. This exam board is OCR. So you might as well see OCR, IT. They're fairly interchangeable, um, but referring to the same course. Although there is an older version we are focused on the Cambridge Technicals from 2016. And in the future, there'll be a new course, uh, I'm sure. So this may be out of date. I'm focused on one labeled 2016, which is currently in action at the time of recording. Now, CTEX are quite versatile. There are a few different variants, which I'll go into in a couple of minutes. But there is one unit which every single person will do called Unit 1. And there are loads of units. The Unit 1 is one of your mandatory ones, which means everyone's got to do it. And it's an examined unit which means you sit down in an exam hall, do the paper, and it's sent off and marked by examiners working for OCR. The other units are internal units, which are coursework in effect. And the proper name for unit one is Fundamentals of IT. And that's what this unit is all about, just a kind of scatter of important IT topics in a fair amount of detail, but not loads of detail. Units will do in the future, go into more detail on these particular topics. So it's quite, there's a lot of content, in fact, loads of content to learn in Unit 1, but it's not in tons of detail, which other units may well go into as you go down the line. Now, before going into some more specifics about the exam, I want to go through OCR's website because we'll save this quietly, but the website is a bit of a mess, to be honest, and it's quite hard to navigate. Um, I don't think that's necessarily OCR's fault, but this qualification has got lots and lots of variants and that can get confusing. So first of all, to get to this website, all I did was search for CTEC IT or Cambridge Technicals IT. And a lot of the stuff on this page is for teachers, but there are loads of things here you should be aware of and you should be using to prepare for this exam and also other units as well. So first thing to point out, which is really important is, there are two tabs here, level two and level three. I'm only really interested for now in level three. So if you are doing level two, I'm afraid this video and this set of videos does not apply because level two is equivalent to a GCSE. Level three is equivalent to an A-level. So it's really important if you are 16 and above, you're looking at level three. And if you're younger, you're looking at level two. Generally speaking, there might be some exceptions, but that's how it goes. Now, level two is completely different to level three. So be really careful. I'm focused on the A-level equivalent, not the GCSE equivalent. Now, that's important, always be glued to this tab if you are doing level three, and your teacher will be able to confirm. Um, but now, in terms of other stuff, this brochure is not very helpful. If you want to see what we call the specification, which goes through um, what exactly is gonna come up in the exam and other units, you've gotta to go to the units page which for some reason is incredibly slow. I've got no idea why it's configured so slowly. But when it eventually loads, again, you see more options. And these are each of our variants I was talking about before. You'll see a, uh, a little acronym, GLH, quite often. This stands for Guided Learning Hours, and it's how long you'll be taught, roughly, um, for each of these different variants. So the certificate is like an AS level, uh, the 360 are like A levels, and these bigger ones are multiple A levels. So 1080 is equivalent to three A levels in effect. And again, your teacher will be able to tell you, but I would suggest most people are doing one of these two. And if you click each one, there'll be different units showing up. But if you go through, you'll see unit one is in each of these. Everyone does it, mandatory. Now. In the diploma ones, you will see there are different pathways, and the different pathways have different optional and some mandatory units. So there are loads of units, 
a lot of these are, most of these are course, coursework but these change a little bit based on the pathway again your teacher will be able to confirm which one you're doing but ultimately unit one unit two is the same for all of them those are the exam units now if you click these pdfs you'll see the specification it goes through what exactly the exam board say you should know you should learn this as much as you can off by heart and my videos cover all of these specification points but it's worth printing and referring to this as you go through uh, you may be ticking off stuff as you go now uh, other stuff on this page which is useful actually in a different tab if you go to assessment under assessment you'll see past papers again sticking to the correct tab and you can go and get past papers a great way of practicing is doing past papers and marking these using the mark scheme provided now just to go back to some key details of unit one in particular unit one you'll do either in january or may it will depend on what your teacher thinks is best and the paper itself is an hour and a half and is worth 80 marks so that means if you are doing about a minute a mark which is generally a good idea you've got 10 minutes spare at the end to check your workings out and stuff like that now there are two sections of this paper section a is multiple choice 15 marks worth these are not easy i think some people expect these to be just uh, a joke but they're not straightforward but if you've learned the content they should be no problem and should only take 10 15 minutes to do section b is more like a typical exam where you've got short answers and ex extended response questions where you're actually writing the answer and not just ticking a box these range from one mark to usually up to 10 marks there'll be a couple of 10 markers which are very off-putting what i've done is do a walkthrough of actually this past paper so if you want to watch that you can see me talk about how to answer 10 markers but the main thing is some questions have got a little star and asterisk next to them that means the quality of your writing is being assessed got to make sure you spell things right got to make sure it makes sense got to make sure you're writing in full sentences that's really important and one other question which comes up quite a lot you can use a calculator for this paper that'll come in handy for your binary hexadecimal questions another common question is about grading because this isn't an a level the grading scheme is different to what you might be used to so there are four grades you can get from unit one and unit two uh, which are near pass pass merit and distinction so you can fail it too if you fail you get a u near pass is marked as r weirdly on gray boundaries so if you see that it's a near pass and this is a bit confusing because these are not your final grades you do a, you know five or more units generally speaking and so these are just from one unit at the end of your course when you get a certificate when you get a diploma whatever one you're doing you'll get a grade usually like this pass merit distinction and distinction star so we get rid of near pass that's only for exams and we have a new grade distinction star what this means is if you get to results day and get a distinction and you might feel disappointed that's fine a distinction star only comes in at the end of the course assuming you are doing five units and if you got say a distinction in both unit one and unit two and got a pass in one of your other coursework units you could still get distinction star so it's not totally cutthroat but the exams are incredibly important speaking of which you can actually reset the exams because they're so important you can try again but that'll really be down to your teacher and the timings of your course and just one final thing on grades is not always particularly helpful but just to compare these final grades to a level grades a distinction star is equivalent according to ucas to an a star a distinction is equivalent to an a a merit is equivalent to a c so it's quite a big drop off between a merit and, and a distinction and a pass is equivalent to an e so merit and pass are quite a lot below the two distinction options just on the content in unit one there are five topics really five learning objectives is how the exam board call it um, i won't read through them i've underlined the words which are most important here lo1 is hardware lo2 software lo3 is a mix of stuff but things like virtualization and networks um, are the main, main things lo4 is about sort of working and getting used to work lo5 is a bit about ethical issues and also cyber security as well now in the unit one specification ocr have said roughly speaking 
for percentages of each of these objectives, which I think is interesting because it can focus your revision. LO4 is quite easy, I would say, but is not worth as much as the other LOs. LO3, which is not easy, is worth the most, which suggests probably that's where you want to focus your revision. LO1, LO2, LO5 are worth the same, although I would say LO1 is massive, LO2 is quite big, LO5 is not that big. In terms of what I've done to hopefully help you get ready for this exam, I've got a playlist with 50, which is a lot of videos, 50 videos which cover the theory for this exam. So these are, I've got a playlist of all the videos in one go. I've also got separate playlists for each of our LOs. So this one is LO3, for example. I'll put the links to all of these in the description. If you watch these videos back to back, it will take about seven hours, which would be torture. So I'd really recommend breaking it down maybe focusing on a particular LO. But I hope these will be useful, both revision ahead of time, but also right before the exam. These cover all the content you need to know and will hopefully have you really well prepared. So all that's left to say is hopefully this video is useful, but in particular, hopefully my theory videos are useful for your preparation. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your exam.